Hey guys, welcome back. Well, today I'm going to do a quick little mail call. Um, this is a big box I got in the mail today, and this is from Brian over at True Drone Reviews. I'm sure you guys have heard him, his name mentioned before my channel, or many of you probably already watch his channel, but he sent me some stuff, and I don't know what's in here, so I'm going to take a moment here and, and go look at it. Um, and just big thanks to Brian, because he's been helping him out sending stuff to my channel lately. Um, you know, he gets a lot of stuff, and a lot of things he does buy on his own, and he's sending stuff out to me, and Donnie, and some of the other reviewers, and I just can't think of enough, because it's not super easy to get stuff from the vendors right now to review, and he's really helping to get, provide content to other people, and I just can't think of enough, because it really does mean a lot. So, I'm going to go ahead now and just open it up and see what's in here. I know there's several items. I want to thank uh, four or something, I don't remember. I think I know what one or maybe two items is in here, but I don't know everything. I think there's some surprises. So I'm super excited about that. So let's go ahead and we'll open this up and see what is in the box. So as you can see, I didn't cheat. I've not opened this up, so I don't know what's in here. Um, I'm obviously very excited. I remember he said there was like two drones in one box or something. He had to put into one box together, so I don't know exactly what those are. Okay, whoa, check this out. An Atari flashback. Wow, that's awesome. Not exactly uh, what I typically would review on my channel, though I might be tempted to go ahead and put it on there, but that is sweet. I mean... Uh, Brian's older than me, but he knows that I'm old enough, you know, I'm 47, to uh, have played this. This is the first gaming system that I had as a kid in the uh, early 80s. So I think the Atari came out uh, maybe a little late, was it 1980 or late 70s? I forget. But uh, yeah, this is the first gaming system we had uh, back in the day, and these are just classics. Wow, Brian, I can't think enough. This is amazing. I, I thought about one of these or the classic NES and stuff. Uh, I play. I don't play a lot of the video games right now, but I do I usually play the newer stuff on my PlayStation 4. Um, that's why I like to play stuff right now, but these classics are great. I'd love to introduce my kids to some of these because my girls love to play Roblox, which I can't stand that game, but I think they might like some of these because they're not super difficult games to play for a kid. My kids, my older girls are old enough that they could start to I'll pick this up and learn it. Um, so yeah, I want to show this to him. This looks really cool. Let's take a look here. Oh yeah, how cool is that? I mean, you've got the uh, the classic Atari design. Obviously, the original Atari was much bigger and had switches. And you've got the real Atari size joysticks. Oh, that's awesome. These are this. Are, these are the heydays, and this is where it all started, man, for the home video consoles. Ours, we had the bigger 2600 that had the metal switches, and I remember my brother had some full-size pajamas on, and he came walking across the, the floor, and this was, of course, in the winter time, probably not too long after we received it for Christmas, I'm thinking, and he touched one of the levers, and what do you think happened with the metal lever and all uh, full pajamas with socks, but you know, those full pajamas you fit into, they even have legs and feet, well, static electricity, spark, it shocked it, that fried the whole Atari. They didn't even, they did not think about um, putting rubber boots or, on the ends of those switches to protect them from static electricity. And those switches went right into the motherboard and stuff, and that shock electricity just fried the whole entire system. So we got another one, and my dad put little rubber boots on the end of each one of the uh, little rubber grommet boot-like things on the end of all the switches, and that never happened again. I'm sure Atari switched to plastic or something later on, but that was a major oversight when that was built back in the day. So I'm sure it happened to us. It probably happened to a boatload of other people. You didn't have the internet back then to share your stories of how stuff like that happened. So go ahead and set this off to the side over here. Let's see what else we got in here. And here is the K... F 600 yeah this is the one that I think Brian reviewed um, just reviewed it the other day I think he threw another drone in here so I'll have to dig around and see but the KF 600 has got like the rear inverted props and I know he really liked it, it was a really uh, quiet fly, uh, flyer you can see the inverted prop there let's see if I can dig through I see a JJRC controller so I think he's put that kind of a box fan looking drone here. This is the controller for the uh, the one I'm looking at here. This is a two-in-one. He's talking about two things thrown in the same box. Yeah, there's the uh, 
inverted prop. This, I, I'm looking forward to fly this. This thing looked pretty cool. Let's see if I can find out what else is in here. So you got this controller for this one here. This is that little, the little uh, JGRC one. I forget, was it the plunk or something weird? I forget the name. They had the, the motors pop out into place and then they, and they slide back sideways so that the drone is really flat and, and, and easy to carry around. So, well, Brian, thanks for this. This will be some cool stuff I can check out on the channel here as soon as possible. I can see the batteries in here for that bigger drone. And uh, there's something else in here which he did tell me about. He didn't know if I had one. This is one of those, uh, an anemometer, anemometer. I should know it better being a person who's actually into the weather like I am. This is for taking the wind speed. So this is gonna tell us the wind speed and probably miles per hour, uh, probably kilometers. It might even do knots, I don't know. This is really helpful because when I go out to review, I'm telling you guys the wind speed based on just experience or what I've, the forecast, I'm just guessing. This can actually give us a real accurate reading. I just have to remember to use this, so I'm not used to it and figure it out, it can't be too hard to use. And uh, then we can actually do a test, say, hey, it's a windy day, I've got, you know, 11 mile per hour wind or something like that. And then we fly a drone around and to see how it does, especially the GPS drones, see how well they hold position in the wind. I just have to remember to use this, but this is really helpful because there's days where I don't know about the wind and this can give me an idea if it's gonna be too windy at that moment to try to fly or if it's just within the threshold of what I could probably try to fly. Obviously a calm day, you know it's a calm day, you won't need to have one of these on a calm day. So it's really cool. I think Brian, I saw his, he did a mail call today and he got a new one from somebody else, I believe. So he had this old or spare one and I really appreciate him sending it to me because I don't have one of these. And there's times where I may just want to go out and get a, a wind speed just because I'm a, a weather geek and I like the weather and storms. And I've got a, a I've got one of these on my, uh, my backyard on my weather station, but it's not very accurate. It's always probably 50 60 percent of what the true wind speed is so some of that's because of the houses and stuff obstructing the wind but i got it mounted up rather high and it still doesn't uh give me the the wind speed as i would want it to all right when we go what else we got here this what an osmo mobile no this better be something else he didn't send me that did he if he does i don't i don't i'm speechless at the moment this is looks like it is oh my gosh Brian seriously dude I don't know what to say I'm lost for words that's just it's like you read my mind I was thinking about going to Best Buy and picking up the uh, Osmo pocket because I'd like to have a gimbal to do around some of my RC cars and stuff and I thought that would be really good but I had been thinking about a smartphone or an action cam gimbal. I had a smartphone gimbal I reviewed a few years ago. It was not DJI quality, it was a budget one. And it had like a bit of the shakes. It never would totally stay still. It was better than what your hand could film, but it wasn't good enough for what I want to use on my channel. And I thought about getting the pocket DJI. I've never owned anything by DJI. This is my first right here. And I do remember when Brian bought this a long time ago. I had forgotten about it though. I remember when he bought it, but the, I was thinking about getting a pocket Osmo to use, but you know what, I got a new cell phone that's got a pretty good video camera now. This will be perfect. I mean, thank you so much, Brian. I don't know what to say. I'm kind of lost for words. This will let me get those steady shots, and I know it's gonna work great, and I don't have to, uh, I don't have to go out and buy one now, but I can use this with my cell phone and get super steady, steady shots around my, you know, around my car for an intro or something. And my cell phone will record 1080p at 60, which is plenty good enough for what I do on my channel. And this will allow me to, you know, actually um, record what I want to record. And I, now I don't have to go out and spend $300. Uh, so I had some money set aside in savings. I was gonna go buy a pocket. I don't think I need to do that now. So thank you, Brian, for that. I, I don't know, man. You're the best. You're, there's, you know, I have a, I have a small group of friends in this hobby, and Brian's one of them. And, and I tell you what, they're great people. And I just can't thank him enough for that gift. I mean, that's just an amazing thing to send somebody. I'm so thankful. Thank you, Brian. And this looks like one of these. Uh, it says just says drill the T Smart. I actually 
And Brian wouldn't know this. I actually had this drone. I actually had two of them at one time. But it's not on my channel. So that's good. I can still review this. I actually, I used to do some articles for RC Drone Arena. Uh, Yash over there, I used to help him out. Uh, he was over in India, but he'd have something shipped here. And I would write articles and take pictures. And actually I did, I think Geek Buying, he had sent this to me. And they actually sent me two of the XBM 55s. And they did accidentally sent me two. And I actually reviewed them. I don't have the drones anymore. So I did, it was pretty good. The camera I was pretty decent. I think it was kind of a wide angle, but I wasn't able to put it on my channel because they didn't really want me to publish stuff they sent me on my YouTube and write articles. They wanted my stuff they sent me just to be on their website, so it's exclusive, which I understand. Um, so I, said, I, I gifted them or something. This was probably two years ago. Um, I've been into, into reviewing now for three years come July. It might have been a little less than two years ago. But like I said, I don't have it, so I'm certainly going to take it back up and I'll try to do a review. It, but it, it is an older drone, but it's not an extremely common drone. So some of you guys might be interested to see this just because it's not real uh, common. It's a little bit more obscure. It says it's by Shao Bai Ma or something like that. But I would say T Smart. It obviously, as you can tell here, the XP55 looks like a Hubson uh, H, you know, the H501. Those kind of look, but the nose mounted fixed camera, and that's just a 720p. The controller is cool because your smartphone goes in the middle, so it's not like down below or anything. It's kind of like right where you look at your fingers on the sticks, so it's actually pretty good. I, I remember, I, I liked this drone. It had the cool LEDs on the bottom. I think the one I had, I think I had two, and actually one of them I think had a bad battery, so I was glad that they sent me two, but like I said, I don't have those. I think I gifted them together at the same time so the person could have a spare uh, back then when I reviewed it, but like I said, I reviewed it on uh, that website I did not review it on my YouTube channel so that gives me something I can actually review on the channel now because it did not come from RC Drone Arena all right guys well that is everything Brian sent me my it's a whole bunch of things here I'm just a bit lost for words but I'm trying to find my words to thank him um, so thanks again Brian for sending me this stuff I love all of it and I'm obviously especially ecstatic over the DJI a pocket uh, so excuse me the uh, smartphone gimbal that's gonna just be that's gonna be my go-to favorite thing I don't know if I'll review it or not um, I probably will but if I don't I'll very least will be using it on my channel so Brian I'll be able to see when I use it. I can get some nice steady shots um, especially for my car reviews out in the field for like intros and stuff like that uh, when I'm going around the car and it's not gonna be all shaky and bobbly and wobbly and I can use it you know hopefully for some other filming on my channel too as much as I can can you know the one I had was rather cheap so uh, it didn't work well this one I know anything with DJI is gonna be good it's not gonna be bad that sound you hear back there is a sump pump I'm in the basement and it's got so much rain the pump runs all the time all right guys that wraps it up big thanks to Brian at true drone reviews please check his channel out. if you stumble across this video or more importantly you're one of the subscribers that just has been subscribed to my channel it's unaware of Brian's channel you know go check it out he's got a lot of stuff he's really honest with his reviews he's pretty funny in his videos and uh, like I said he buys a lot of his stuff so he's not uh, you know he you don't have to worry about him ever shilling out for anything because he buys it and I don't shill out either myself but sometimes you know people accuse people who run these channels and get free sample products of being sugar coating stuff I guess I want to get at and he definitely doesn't do that all right guys that wraps it up be sure to subscribe if you want to see more any of this stuff get reviewed or anything else I got on the channel coming up such as the uh, um, the unique breeze that Brian sent me a few months ago. That's going to be one of the next things I hope to do. I've also got the uh, another drone that I'm, uh, I flew outside today. I got from Donnie the Vizio um, private eyes GPS drone. That one um, I did a test flight today. I'm going to try to review that soon. Tomorrow's forecast is for a ton of wind, so uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to get it up and. and and test it. Alright guys, that wraps it up. Be sure to subscribe if you're not a subscriber and as always guys, have a great day. The power of the dark side, 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 side.